readers, reviewers, countrymen, lend us your ears. Welcome Good morning and Oh Two's a crowd, isn't it? It really? is. It is. The new saying. It should be a one man show. It should. Take it away. Maybe Ed. we should just do videos. Take it away, now, Ed. Ed. Yeah. Reckon? All right, we have the Brother Ed and the Brother Will channels. Yeah. Pitted <laughs> against each other. <laughs> get more and views? you can only watch one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to the channel. I am Ed and this is. No, I'm Will! <laughs> I am Will. And this is my brother, Ed, and together we make the Brothers Grin. And today we're going to be talking about our June TBR, and we have quite the pile. Quite June the ambitious. Is a great month of the year because it's mm -hmm. sunny, so it is. need I say any more? No. And we're going for, we'll be going for a lot of walks, so I, I will. <laughs> All you for do certain. is talk about walking. And there'll be a lot of audible listening going on whilst I'm walking, so yeah, let's get right into it. Ed, let's get down to business in the world. Let's of get the down. To Alexandria. Business. First one I'm going to read is. Peter V. Brett's The Painted Man. I've heard lots of the great things about this. Apparently it sounds a bit like Pitch Black. I don't know if you remember that film with Vin Diesel, uh, which is like, basically, it, it, I think he's Riddick in that. Is that the first Riddick film? But yeah, it sounds like the monsters at night, fantasy world, pretty cool. Very don't nice. don't know much else about it, but I know that everyone says it's phenomenal. So I can't wait to read it. And I'm currently reading A Game of Thrones. I'm near the end. 100 pages left. Started this in May, but I will be finishing Who is in your favourite character so far? Oh, that's... I think... Oh, that's so hard. No, yeah, it's a quick fire question, Will. Eddard. Or oh. Rob. Okay. John. <laughs> okay. Uh, but and yeah, Matt, so, what's your favourite house? Obviously the Starks. Okay. Obviously. Uh, but yeah, this is awesome. I am absolutely loving it. This is just fantastic. I love all the history, the depth to the world. So many characters, but they all stick out to you. So you, it's not as confusing as one might think. But anyway, I've been taking it slow so I can really like ruminate on what is going on. And I've really enjoyed doing that. And that is a Game of Thrones. We will hopefully be doing a video talking about my thoughts when I finish. And you read it recently as well, so we can do a kind of review type video. But yeah, we're watching again, series, aren't we? As you we read are. it, so we can uh, compare. Um, right, the next one for me is, I'm currently reading this about 150 knows. pages through, um, is Dreamy the Hound by Amanda Scott. This is the third book about Boudicca in the four books that she has written. So we're approaching the end. I don't want to read the last book because I think I know what's going to happen. Um, unless she changes history, which I really hope she does. Um, but it, uh, this is probably one of my favourite historical fiction series because it's written so beautifully, so many fantasy elements within here. And even though it feels so epic and so huge, it's really honed in in just a small amount of characters. Um, so that's why I really like it. Very nice, Ed. And I am currently listening to The Hod King, the third instalment in the books of Babel by <coughs> Josiah Bancroft. And this is really enjoyable. It's been quite a while since I've read the second instalment. So a bit like the problem I had with Tide Child out of Jay Barker's trilogy. Because I've left a bit, I think, too much of a gap there. It, it's, it's taken me a little bit of a while to get back into it. Mm. Uh, but I'm about halfway through now and I'm in the flow. And it, it's very quirky, very funny. Again, Josiah Bancroft just keeps up uh, his strengths of the previous two instalments. Very nice. And I will be reading a non-fiction this time. Look at that beautiful cover. I love That's it. That's it. Uh, it's called... That's very nice. Um, Lakota America by Pekka Hamalainen, um, which I think he's from Iceland. Okay. Um, but nice. yeah, so this is a non-fiction about the Lakota tribe, um, also known as the Sioux. Um, so I really look forward to reading that. I'm sure there'll be lots of amazing details here, uh, lots of you know, cultural references, which I'm really looking forward to getting into. And there were some very important Native American figures and characters um, who were part of the Lakota tribes. So, yeah, there's going to be a big portion of that in here, I'm sure. But I've read The Comanche Empire, also written by the same author, and that was just delivered in such a fantastic and well-researched, well-studied uh, way that goes through the whole history of the Comanche tribes. So I'm sure it's going to do the same um, for these bands of Lakota. Very nice, said. And next up, I have the short story collection Different Seasons by Stephen King, which was some of his most successful works and uh, some of them, his most successful films, uh, film adaptations as well. Mm -hmm. So we have short it's funny, he adaptation. has His best films are short stories. Yeah, there's that said about him that a lot of his books that are converted to films don't do great, but his short stories uh, transfer very well. So we have Short Shrunk Redemption, we have At Pupil, we have The Body, which is Stand oh, By Me. At Pupil. And then is uh, I think so the fourth good. one in here isn't as well known. And I, don't know what it is. No, it's at the end, isn't it? Oh, is it at the end? It doesn't say, but anyway, there's a fourth one, uh, and I'm really looking forward to reading this. I have read Salem's Lot and Later by Stephen King, 
and thought they were both really great. He's got a style that's very immersive and he knows how to create a world for sure and also capture that spirit of the younger generation, doesn't he? Yeah. That Bill Dung's Roman, uh, the coming of age story. And yes, I'm really looking forward to reading this. I've watched uh, the films of The Body and Shawshank Redemption, but I'm sure I will still adore these. So yeah, some more Stephen King. Uh, I think my book reviews be happy to hear that. Absolutely. Uh, and talking of the mics... Here is a book by Mike Shackle, um, which is called A Fool's Hope. Hey, Mike. Great quote as well. Um, I believe that's from Lord of the Rings, isn't it? I think um, so. But yeah, so this is book two of The Last War. Are they called The Last War? Yep. Yeah. Uh, and I absolutely loved We Are the Dead. I think it's one of the best fantasy books I've read ever. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this one as well, because Mike Shackle is a fantastic author. He's a great guy as well. He's created such brilliant characters. He and has. literally every single chapter was so important to mm -hmm. the book. And Takes it has some very bold own, choices as well. It feels a little bit like Tarantino in the way that every scene that Tarantino writes is kind of iconic on its own. And it, if you just watch one scene from each of his films, then they would kind of stand on their own. You know, there's something to pick up on each scene. Um, well, that is what I'm trying to say. And uh, False Hope, well, I'm sure it'd be the same because We Are the Dead was exactly like that. Every single chapter had an insane moment that I could, I can recall and I think of pretty regularly as well. So cannot wait to do that. The book, the last book of the trilogy comes out in, is it July? Yes, I believe it does. July. Yeah. Uh, and what is that one called, Will? Uh, Until the Last, which oh, no. the title oh, doesn't give you great die. hope, does it? But yeah, I no. loved A Fool's Hope and I love We Are the Dead. Please try this series out please and let us know your thoughts if you already have read it okay so next up i have uh shuggy bane uh, by oh, douglas i've got the surname douglas something um and this won the book of prize a few years ago uh, and i've heard that it's a bit similar in, uh, to uh this is england which is one of our favorite programs in the sense that it's an exploration of uh someone growing up uh, in uh, it, kind of a rundown area, or yeah. I think this is in Glasgow, um, yeah. and I think that it's meant to be very hard hitting, very impactful, um, but quite important to read at the same time. So yeah, I think this is going to be uh, a very uh, a read right up my alley, and so yeah, I'm really going to enjoy it. Very nice. <laughs> okay, and the next one I'll be reading is what The is Silmarillion um, by oh, uh, what's his name. Jolkin, Rolkin, Rolkin, Tolkien. <laughs> we do not suffer any mockery of <laughs> I'm not many mocking. things. Uh, by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I, uh, William has been saying that I need to read this. Uh, he, I told him to read Gates of Fire and he did. So now he said you need to read the same really. In February, my um, ad, and Ed said we'll both read the book in the month of February. And now it's June and he's still not held up his side of the bargain. But he told me I need to read uh, one of... Uh, uh, was it Rob Lowe you wanted me to read? Rob Lowe's books. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to until Edward is in. And he was suddenly like, oh, I know what I'm reading in June. Tick. So I'm sure I will love this. I've read the first chapter a few times and it's just a whole lot of names. So um, we will see. Yeah, I think the first chapter is a bit, I'd say, I agree, it is overwhelming. But yeah. I think you can actually skip it, read the rest, maybe watch a summary video. and But then it's always great to refer back to with a lot of yeah, the names. absolutely. But I can't wait to read this because I'm completely in the mood for uh, some more Lord of the Rings stuff, especially with Rings of Power coming out in September. Um, although I did see some photos on the Empire magazine and it just doesn't look good. Best not it? to talk about it. No, but at least we have this. So. At least we have that, yes. To harken back to uh, the good old days. <laughs> uh, but next up I have, I'm not, I'm going to make the same joke as I did last time, I'm not reading it all, uh, but I am going to be reading Coriolanus, the play by William Shakespeare. And so this is about, I believe, uh, a Roman general who has had a very decorated career, but reaching kind of uh, the drop. Uh, and it's the question of, do you let him, just let him do what he wants? Has he earned the right to be above other people or do you hold him accountable for the goings ons? Uh, and so, yeah, I think it's going to be a very enjoyable read. Sounds really to my taste, especially with um, uh, the historical plays that I love by uh, William Shakespeare. And yes, yeah, so Coriolanus is going to be my... Shakespeare read for the month. I'm trying to do maybe one, uh, maybe not a Shakespeare play a month, but maybe a play a month. I'm going to try mm. to do. I did Hamlet in May and Coriolanus will be for June. Very nice. Thank you, Will. It's oh, quite and heavy. I will be continuing reading a few sagas from the saga of the Icelanders. Uh, let's see what's next up for me. I think it is the saga of Hraffan Kelfre's Gothi. Very so, nice accent. Thank you. Yeah. I uh, look forward to reading that one and there's a, a couple of more I will squeeze in as well. But um, I've read the, the big sagas now and I think these ones are all pretty short. So the saga of the Confederates is only about 30 or so pages. Gisli Sarsen's saga, that is also pretty short. So I think I'll probably read those three 
three uh, during the month of June. Very, very nice. I, I keep saying it and I'll say it again. I need to read some of them. Need but next up, I have to read Speed and Feed. I feel the need. No. The need, need to read. read. <laughs> okay, we, we weren't connected there. But uh, Tyrant's Throne is going to be an audible read for me this month. Finishing up the Grey Coats uh, series. I forgot the word for Extravaganza. a second. Extravaganza. Exactly, yeah. Aww, so being reunited. Rusty. And Falcio and Kess. They're such a brilliant uh, trio. Trio. Friends. Wow, just give me a second to just collect my words. So they're just all going right on my head. But anyway, the Grey Coats is been such an enjoyable read so far the mm. first three installments are so engaging really enjoyable great fantasy and the the stakes are just raising higher and higher and as i said before the trio are at the core of this and absolutely fantastic and in uh, the third installment saint's blood i think the supporting characters had moments that they shone as brightly as that main trio as well so that was really enjoyable and it's gonna be a bittersweet ending, finishing up with the great coats, but I'm oh, I'm sure I'm really going to enjoy it as well. And then I'll be ready for Sebastian's new release in September. Oh, can't wait for that. And yeah, book four, Tyrant Stone, is fantastic. I will be listening to a couple of Max Hastings books actually. Um, nice. um, feeling a little bit of World War Two moody, so um, I will be uh, listening to Das Reich. Um, which is about the SS moving out of France, I believe, um, in uh, 1944. Very nice. uh, and then I'll also be reading Bomber Command, which is basically the history of um, the flights in the in the skies, the aeroplane battles and Blitzkrieg and all that kind of stuff, uh, which will be fascinating. I mean, uh, our granddad, uh, Grandy, was in the RAF um, after World War Two, though. So, but we've always kind of held the RAF in a special place in our hearts, haven't we? Um, and I find it absolutely fascinating. I did actually watch Ewan McGregor's, um, cause I think Ewan McGregor's brother is a, an RAF pilot oh, yeah, now. So he got, Ewan McGregor kind of did the training as well to fly. And then they were flying Spitfires. It's absolutely amazing. That's on YouTube. Definitely go check that out. But, um, yeah, I'll be listening to Bomber Command and Does Reich. And, you know, I might as well mention it now, talking about Max Hastings, I'm going to be reading Operation Pedestal. Nice. I read his work, um, Churchill's Warlord, 1940-1945 mm -hmm. before, um, as research for a kind of like dissertation style essay I was doing for college. Uh, and I thought it was a fantastic rundown of the events of World War Two and Churchill's involvement in yeah. them. And I think Max Hastings is very good at showing... Uh, at, creating a clear point that this these are the facts and then showing this is my opinion and uh, so he doesn't intermingle that he's very good uh, he doesn't allow it to permeate into his writing i imagine he does a bit it's very hard to avoid being biased but i think he does a great job yeah and so i'm going to be reading operation pedestal which is about a specific section of world war Two. so i think in 1942 uh, when the the axis powers were in control really uh, it, this is about Malta and basically the British were like, we need a victory. And so they put a lot of their forces into Malta and this was called Operation Pedestal and it resulted in one of the most dangerous, bloodiest um, and brutal uh, conflicts of World War Two, apparently. So yeah, I'm looking forward to, well, it'd be interesting to yeah, read about. Yeah, fascinating. It sounds weird saying looking forward to, but yeah, I find World War Two very fascinating and mm. hopefully I really enjoy, I said it again, Hopefully our final operation in the pedestal <laughs> very fascinating. Well, our cousin, Irish Tom, uh, is I've never known anyone to know so much about World War Two, so we've got to try and keep up with him, haven't we? We do, yeah. And uh, Irish Tom's been helping me fix up my car, so, um, and, you know, he was telling me lots about World War Two, so it's kind of inspired me to go read a little bit more as well. Yeah, so. and it's always great, great when you can chat to someone about history as well, yeah. when you've read about it. And then Will and I will actually be reading Daughter of Red Winter yes, ahead of schedule, which is the new book by Ed McDonald. Now, Ed McDonald is one of my favourite authors. Blackwing is just an absolute genius book. It's basically um, Sherlock Holmes if he was awesome. No, I'm joking. I'm Sherlock Holmes is cool. Um, but yeah, Blackwing, <laughs> uh, if it was kind of Flintlock, Matchlock inspired fantasy, it is a lot of fun. It's really dark, it's really gritty, but it is a character study and you absolutely love the main character. Um, now, Daughter of Red Winter is moving away from that trilogy. It's a whole new world, a whole new world, um, and it's gonna be really exciting. I don't know much <laughs> about it um, apart from that it's more I traditional am fantasy. Excited. Isn't it? Is it more traditional? I think so. That it's more kind of that feel that um, harkening back. But I think I it's can't be imagine at the same time. Uh, Edmund Donald writing feel good fantasy. So <laughs> we will see. But I've not read the original trilogy, and also if you want some nice braid edges, there's still. Um, some available at the Broken Binding. You get some nice pale blue sprayed edges there. And Not so, just yeah. blue, pale, pale blue. blue. Like Man Can't City, miss out on that, can pale you? Blue. Yes, exactly. Oh, very nice. Very nice, Ed. Anyone very nice. from Manchester? 
Cool. Right. Yeah. Next <laughs> so next up, I have Blood and Blade by Matthew Harvey, the third instalment in the Bernicia Chronicles. I've really enjoyed this historical fiction, uh, not trilogy, series so far. Uh, it's been really fun following Bayo Brand. He's a great character. I'm really enjoying his growth as a character. And yeah, um, have you read Blood and Blade yet? Yes, I have. Okay, so yeah, is, is, that, is that the last one you've read so far? Yeah, but yeah. So then, so, yeah, I'll be on. Uh, I'll have read as many as Ed when I've gone through Blood and Blade. So you've read Wolf of Wessex and the yes. first three of the Benicia Chronicles. First two, and Blood and Blade is number three. So have you read any more, Matthew Harvey? No, we will be. Not. Oh, I, but actually, I, I have, have read. I've read number seven of that series because I read that first. For some yeah, stupid reason. I know. Um, um, but then we have a Time for Swords that I'm going to be reading quite soon as well, which is yes. a, a different series, and there's two installments out. But yeah, yes. So that is. is my next read, Ed. I will be listening to the King of Westerns, Larry McMurtry, who is actually an inspiration of Matthew Harfey, as he commented on one of our recent videos, which is fascinating to hear. I love hearing what authors inspire other authors. Yeah. And I think Matthew, um, Larry McMurtry sorry, has such an amazing voice that he definitely inspires lots of people out there, including myself. Um, but, but I will be listening to Boone's Lick, which has got a very short story. Um, and it's going back to Larry Mercury's cowboy ways. And uh, yeah, I don't know much else about it apart from that, but it's going to be pretty cool. Very nice, Ed, very nice. And next I'm going to be rereading The Fellowship of the Ring. You're doing the same, really, and I'm doing The Fellowship of the Ring. And yeah, I it's going to be the first time I'm listening to it in Audible. I'm going to do the Andy Circus ones. Nice. Uh, and I'm really looking Circus forward to it. Circus or Circus? Yeah, it autocorrected on Good, which is C-I-R-C-U-S. So he's not part of a circus. Uh, but Andy Circus apparently does a brilliant narration. And yeah, it's one of my favourite books. And so I'm sure I'm going to really enjoy being back in this world. Yes, you will. I've got a few epics going on this month, haven't I? You do? Yeah, Game of Thrones, Lord, Lord of the, the Rings. Rings. Last month I had Empire Shucky of the Vampire. <laughs> Shucky Bang, yeah. But yeah, so that is uh, the next Audible listen for me. And the last one for me, I will actually be finally diving into some Dorothy Dunnett, who is apparently the queen of historical fiction. Her and Mary Renault are kind of probably head-to-head. -head. Um, apparently by... Um... <laughs> What's the word? I don't by um I don't, uh, I don't even know what you're trying to find. You know you hear about someone reputation. Oh right, okay. by reputation. What an idiot. Um <laughs> I will be listening to Niccolo Rising, which is a tale of Italy in the fifteenth century. I mean, come on, that is right up my alley, as you said earlier. Yes, it um, is. <laughs> and yeah, so I love medieval Italy. And Dorothy Dunnett apparently is, a, uh, is an amazing writer. I know that she's written King Hereafter, which is basically the tale of Macbeth, but in the Viking Ages. Um, the real Macbeth, which is pretty cool. Um, so, but I will be listening to Niccolo Rising. Um, so, yeah, I love the 15th century, especially Italy. When I do reenactment, the, my persona is someone from Italy. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. Very nice. I've got two more. I won't talk for too long, don't worry. But I have, first of all, but actually... Yeah, two more. Um, I have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. I love these little pocket editions. Like, it fits. Again, how in big my are hand. your pockets, Will? Just like that. It'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, well, look, I can actually fit it in my pocket with my shorts here. But yeah, To Pretty the big. Lighthouse. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed reading Orlando. It's very quirky, really great writing style. And, uh, to the Lighthouse, I think I mentioned before, I've read the prologue because it was an exam of mine. So yeah, I'll be having some uh, flashbacks there. But. Mm. Uh, it was very well written and I had a lot to say about it. I see um, twitching in the corner. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, oh, but I yeah, uh, okay. this is known as a classic and I'm really looking forward to reading it. D did and Virginia Woolf live near us? She did, yes. Yeah. She did. She I did. don't know anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm just going to say yes. Uh, and then next I have a Kindle uh, read. I'm going to be reading Jade City. So I'm finally going to get to it. So this is Fonda Lee. It's been a really successful tragedy. He's said to be as close to the Godfather in fantasy as you can get. And the Godfather is possibly, with the uh, Depart Society and Lord of the Rings, my favourite films of all time. What? What about Last Mohicans? Oh, it's up there. But let's, this is going to be Robert Warren. What about for me. Yeah, right. Top Gun? Oh, it's up there. That's a, we watched Top Gun Maverick. We'll talk about it in mid-month update because oh, yeah, it was in June. Yeah. Uh, I won't get into it now. But yeah, I... I'm really looking forward to reading Jade City and I think it's going to be up there. Everything I've heard, it sounds like it's just going to be a book for me. You know when you f have that feeling that it's just going to click yeah. with you? I think it's going to be one of them. I think it will click with you. 
So there we go. That's our TBR for June. Quite the ambitious pile, don't we have? Uh, but yes, yeah, so that is great. We, li we like to set ourselves up for failure, don't we? Well, actually, last month we said it was very ambitious, but uh, I'm not sure about you, but there was only one book I didn't finish. That was Game of Thrones. And yeah, I'll, I'll finish it in the next day or so. So I was close, very close. And uh, I think there's a saying that the higher you reach, you may not hit it, but you'll hit a bit lower. So the higher you go, you'll get higher. Or aim small, miss small. Two very different uh, <laughs> mottos there. But thank you so much for watching. Let us know what you're reading, June. Let us know your thoughts on anything that we've mentioned here. Are you going to be reading something a bit different? Maybe some historical fiction this month? Please do, because we do love trying to get people into reading more. Uh, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoy our content for the following month. Is that it, Ed? Have you got anything to add? Truth and courage. And the brothers go in. The brothers go in. <laughs>